Good morning, friends. It's good to, uh, Thursday, chilly morning here in Georgia. They're even calling for snow tomorrow, and we'll see if we get any. Surprise, the schools haven't shut down yet because uh, the inclination of any schools shuts the schools down. But uh, hey, it's good. It's December. A little bit of chill never hurt anybody as long as you can be inside, that's for sure. So what I want to share with you today, what you're looking at is an old battery I had just taken out of my 2013 Toyota Highlander. And you can see this sucker is old. About five years old, gave about 100,000 miles on it. It was a fantastic battery, the manufactured installed battery. And you can see it's got some corrosion on there, just some chemical buildup. It's hard to tell here, but yeah, you can see a little bit of warping there on the sides. Um, the battery is uh, needs a replacement. Uh, five years, eh, four and a half years, five years uh, with a battery. And, you know, I don't drive four wheeling or anything like that, but uh, it, it served its purpose and it did well. So I replaced it. And uh, when I was talking to the guy, I said, yeah, I just put a new one in there, but I want to keep this one. And he kind of looked at me quizzical saying, why? And I said, because it still holds a charge and I still can do things with this. And he said, okay. And so he just put it on this piece of cardboard, put it in the back of my vehicle and, uh, and I have it in my garage now. And I'm going to show you what you can do with an old battery. Um, this will be a very easy example, but uh, it's going to work. And I think you'll find a lot of um, information out of this that you can use for your own purposes. Um, I read a lot actually on uh, on various blogs and stuff about when the hurricanes went through Florida people had no lights and no power and stuff like that and the the answer to that is yes they did if they have a car and they have a car with any kind of gas in it um, they have power just by this right here your your car battery so let's pretend this is actually sitting in my vehicle and I open the hood and it's just sitting there because the, the lights went out the, the electricity went out the utilities are down but I need some lighting and we'll just use lighting for an example here real quick. You have a generator in your vehicle and this is called a battery. That is your generator. You just need a couple accessories and you need an inverter. This is an inverter and it's 400 watts as you can see 400 watts which means it can hold a load of basically 400 watts. I'm not sure you want to max that you know so let's just say you just want to be safe you put 300 watts on that on your load right here, your inverter. This is a light bulb. Now I use LED lights, that's only nine watts right there. So nine watts running off a 400 watt inverter that's charged with this uh, 12 volt battery will work just fine. They'll give me lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of hours of lighting. Now you can run, let's see, nine divided by 400, whatever that is, you know, I guess 100, no, I guess that'd be 50 lights, I suppose, or 45 or something like that. You could probably run 30 lights off this contraption right here, 39 volt white lights off this contraption right there for, uh, I, actually I'd have to think about the numbers, how many hours that would be I, off the top of my head, I don't know. But it won't be a lot of hours, but you can still run 30 lights if you wanted to. I think it's 20 amp hours, so I think, yeah, I'd have to think about that. Anyway, you can still run a bunch of appliances off this battery this inverter and if you have low wattage light bulbs now if you have a 100 watt incandescent light bulb don't do this don't use a hair dryer anything that will burn or heat i should say anything that will heat coffee don't do it in iron don't do it a blow dryer don't do it hair dryer don't do it things like lighting your computer um, your telephone if you want to charge that shoot even your fridge or an ice box now your fridge would be too much for just this little concoction but if you have an ice box that might charge take 100 watts or so um, that might work uh, for a little bit but either way you have the battery you can do stuff with it so let's show you what i'm talking about then you need these alligator clips and we'll start we'll just put these guys on you clip it up to your terminal there you clip the red on positive the black on neutral got the red here put this guy on positive you get a little bit of a shock and that's okay we come down here to my inverter and we can see it's 12.6 volts that's a 12 volt battery that's basically at its limit in terms of the guy, the uh, my mechanic saying you should uh, not drive that much anymore because it'll probably die on you in the most inopportune time. Probably won't be a Walmart nearby or a Costco or, or a local guy, so you won't be able to just go in there and, f and switch it out very easily. You'll be in the middle of the night at some you know backwoods uh, um, highway, and you'll be in a world of hurt. So just go ahead and replace it now, which I did. But it still has 12 and a half volts, 12.6 volts on there. 
Ideally, at a fully charged, you see about 13 volts, a fully charged maximum uh, battery. But uh, if we can get anything above 12 volts, we're doing pretty good. If it gets down to about 11, you're, you, you have an issue with charging. You want to recharge it if it'll take a charge at that point. But if you're running a, uh, a, a multimeter, you can just find out what your voltage is on in terms of it needs to be recharged. And it might not have the ability to be recharged anymore anyway after that. But anyway, so we have this 400 watt inverter at 12.5, 12.6 volts on that battery. And I got this plug in the light bulb plugged into that. Now what happens, let me tell you what happens. A battery uses 12 volts DC um, electrical ch uh, charge, which is direct current. And so what an inverter does, it takes 12 volt DC electricity, puts it in here and inverts it to 120 volt electricity, which this light bulb and basically all the appliances that you have in your home are gonna run off. So appliances run off 120 volt AC, alternating current. This is 12 volt DC, direct current. And in of itself, then that's not gonna work. The, to plug this guy in directly to here, it won't work because the voltage is much, much higher here than it is here. In fact, it's 10 times higher on a 120 volt uh, electric outlet that you have in your house because it's alternating current. DC is direct current. So we have to invert the voltage in order to give it enough uh, where it can run without frying the system here. And that's what this system does. It inverts it, inverts 12 volts to 120 volts. All right, so your fridge is 120 volts. A battery will not charge the fridge unless you have this inverter. And these things are so cheap, guys. I probably have four or five, oh, I probably got 10 of these guys. 150 watt, 400 watt, 800 watt, 1500 watt, a bunch of them because they're cheap and they're all, they're obviously always good to have uh, just as a backup if nothing else. In fact, the one I have one for my every single vehicle we have has one. The most you can do in your car, you know, your cigarette lighter there, I think it's 150 volts or watts, 150 maybe 120. You don't want to do anything more than 120 watts if you're plugging into your cigarette lighter uh, because it'll fry the system. This is nine watts. So you could literally plug this in into your cigarette lighter and run it um, directly from your car. Now, if you do it directly from the battery, you can go more than 150 watts, but if you're using the, circuit, the cigarette um, lighter in your car, you only want to use 100, I think it's actually 115, I don't know. Do less than 150 to be safe. But if you're doing it directly out the battery, you can do a pretty significant wattage. All right, so you see the light's not turned on, it's plugged in here. Charged by that, let's turn the light on, crack out, and there we go. And so basically, there it is. Battery into the inverter, into the light bulb, nine watts, run me, and again, off the top of my head, I don't know the exact amount of numbers, I have to figure it out. Um, it run me a significant amount of time, just that little contraption right there. There was a little generator I got from Costco, that sucker was like 200 bucks, and that's 1200 watts and that does take gasoline so again what a generator does is it takes gasoline or somehow it takes whatever feeding mechanism gasoline that's battery and it uses it so you can plug in 120 volt appliance into that guy it's called an inverter generator i got another one right there as a matter of fact same thing so basically you got lots of different ways to plug in 120 volt um, appliances that you can use if the lights go down so, moral of the story, you have an old battery or you replace your battery, keep it, keep it. Now, I will clean this up a little bit, um, have some, some stuff here I can sharpen that, make it look nicer and get some of the corroded stuff off there. But uh, keep your batteries. They're just going to recycle them and they have a way to be used. Now, you would not want to drive on that because it might go dead while you're in the, in the middle of the woods. But you certainly have ability to use an inverter to charge your appliances. So I have, you know, two of these I got, Deep Cycle Marine batteries from Costco, I think for like 90 bucks. And those guys will run and run and run and run for a long time. Deep, deep Cycle Marine batteries means you can run them down, you know, basically you don't wanna go lower than 50% charge, but you can. I mean, that's the whole issue is you can do that time and time and time and time again to use to light stuff like your appliances. So I have two deep cycle marine batteries down in my basement as my battery bank. I have this guy now. We have three vehicles. 
outside. So we have six batteries we can use with various inverters to keep the lights on for, for hours and hours and hours and hours until they get the utilities back on. So I hope this helps. The cost of an inverter, this probably cost me 60 bucks. Obviously the battery itself, well, this didn't cost me anything because I already had it. Um, but usually batteries that are gonna be, you know, probably 80 to $100 range, 80 to $100 range. You do not wanna use a light bulb, an incandescent light bulb in this concoction simply because it takes too much watts. The lower the watts, the longer you can run it for. So get an LED light, and that's the only thing you want to do to light your house if you have, uh, have an issue with the power going out. And again, for the love of Mary, do not use anything that, that heats. Heating, coffee, hair dryer, anything like that, um, <laughs> glue gun, anything like that is, is just not what you want to do if you need backup power. If you have comments, put them down below. Oh, i got to tell you the last thing. Go to uh, this guy I know, Steve Harris. This is how I learned this. And trust me, two years ago, I didn't know anything on this. And I went to Battery1234, Battery1234. My man Steve Harris out of Michigan has this great um, free stuff you can listen to in terms of podcasts. But if you want to pay for his six-hour video, it's like 40 bucks, 30 bucks. I tell you, it's the best 30 to 40 bucks you'll ever spend. I've never met Steve personally. Um, I, all I know is that, man, his, his stuff has made a huge difference in my life. Cannot recommend it enough. Uh, battery one, two, three, four, and there's tons and tons of stuff on that guy's website for free. Um, I'd say spend the 35 bucks to buy his, uh, his videos too. All right, guys, put any comments, questions, concerns that you have, put them down below. And I appreciate you taking the time.